Hi, welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to be working on a mixed media piece and we're going to be introducing quite a lot of media into this one. But for now we just need a basic outline. This is complex, don't worry about that, it's going to go basic. So here we have Sun Relief and inside there, uh, all I've done, let's just get this lid off, is punctured the lid inside. And now what we have to do is trim the nib to the correct size that we want like that. Now if you look down there you can see I haven't punctured so cut a little bit more. I'm cutting at a slight angle as well so that I can get a nice fine line. There we go. So you can see the hole down there. I just want that a little wider. That's better. There. So you can clearly see that hole just there. So Sun Relief will give you a 3D effect but it's important to practice. So just draw out a few lines on a scrap piece of paper like I'm doing here. There we go. There, I'm happy with those. So that's going to give me a nice 3D effect throughout this painting. Now, as you can see, it still seeps out after you finish squeezing, just like that there. So make sure you have a bit of tissue or couch roll on the side. And there we go. Just wipe that off. You'll need to do that regularly throughout the uh, drawing process. So all I'm doing here is just a basic outline. So gently squeezing and moving at the same time. Now it's important to fill all of your gaps on the canvas. So try and do it in a continuous line if you can. But if not, just make sure you go over your old lines. Just like that. There we go. Now as we go through this, you'll see the painting or the drawing will get rather uh, simplified. Now I did use a chalk to draw this outline on but uh, it's not necessary to do as much detail as it looks like there is here. There's not as much detail as you think, and you'll see that as we go on. So don't panic too much. Now, if you like, um, there is a small section at the beginning where you can pause the video, and um, you can either, if you've got this on your iPad, you can trace it and transfer the drawing if you wish. Um, so don't, as I say, get over precious at this stage. The paint is gonna completely change this altogether. Now, this sun relief is important um, because we are building a 3D well. The paint we're putting in later has a 3D effect to it, a, a, a special effects to it. And we need to put it in quite thickly in order to do that. So there, as you can see, just literally a basic outline. Now this is going to create the well so I can put enough paint in so the paint will create its effects. All right, just wipe that off there. There we go. So if you make a mistake, don't worry. Just use a cotton bud or a small piece of tissue. And just take it out, just like that. There we go. That looks better. Okay, now don't worry if it smudges on the canvas. Any paint will cover it completely. So don't forget, wipe off and carry on. Now I'm going to speed this video up in a minute. Uh, this I'm just going to finish this outline here so you can see it is literally just a basic outline. Okay, time to speed this up.
completely dry. Uh, now we're going to go in with the black sun relief and I'm going to do the windows. And as you can see, it's not as complex as it looked originally. And that's the reason, as I said before, why I do the outline in the uh, chalk, because uh, had I done that in pencil, I would have gone too fine a detail. With this, it's not about the detail. It's just about creating a 3D outline of your painting. So with the sun relief, again, it's the same as before. First of all, puncture inside and then snip the tip to create a fine tip there. Don't forget the little scrap of paper and just practice creating a fine line, just like that. So as you can see, the faster you go, the finer the line becomes. When you're happy with what you're creating, it's time to go on to your main artwork. Okay, so don't forget, have a piece of tissue to wipe off the nib on a regular basis. So as you can see, it's still oozing through there. there. And all we're doing basically here is we're just going around all of the windows and doors, creating a little 3D, making sure you fill up all of those gaps, just like that. Like that. So it's nothing overly complex again. We're just filling up those windows. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue doing this and speed up the video for you so we can get to the end process. And again, let that dry once all of the black is filled in. Time to speed up. Okay, so now this is completely dried, we're ready to start painting, but before we do that, we've got to test some of the effects um, that the paints um, obviously achieve can achieve uh, in order to make sure that we get the effect that we want. So I'm going to be using for this one uh, some ceramic paints. So I'm going to try to mix a blue and a white together, because you can mix these together as well. But I'm also going to see what it looks like with this colour, and this is for the sky area. I also want to create a cloud effect. Now, when you add in the uh, Fantasy Moon, it will react with the ceramic paint the same way as it would do the vitrail. So effectively, ceramic and vitrail are similar, but ceramic is opaque and vitrail is transparent. So the moon should lace out into the ceramic. So I'm going to test it first on a piece of paper because obviously I want to see the effect before I go on to my main piece. So be aware of that. Test all your paints first. So here I have 
a drawing board with a small piece of canvas on there, just for testing with. So to start with, it's important to stir all of your paints. Now, if you shake these, uh, the ceramics or the vitrail, you'll get bubbles in them. With the Fantasy Moon, if you shake this, the uh, product that causes the effect is settles to the bottom and it will not mix in unless you stir it. So we need to give these all a really good stir. There we go. So I just have some little sticks and just give them all an incredibly good stir. Okay. Okay, so now all of these paints are stirred well. It's now time to test. So first of all, I'm going to use this ceramic paint here, which is the turquoise ceramic paint. And I'm just going to pour a little out onto my test canvas. Not much, just a little bit there, a little bit more than that. I want to test the effect, so I want to see what's going to happen with the paint and what it will roughly look like. Don't forget, these paints will carry on moving and changing until they are dry. So I'm just going to spread that out a little with a palette knife, like that. Now into there, I'm going to put in the Fantasy Moon. Now this one is the Pearl. It should give me a nice cloud colour. But let's see what effects we get. So I'm just drizzling in using my stick. There. That'll do. Now you can put it into the shape you want and just wait for it to lace. Or you can use your palette knife again and just literally merge that in. And spread it out there let's see how that changes and if the paint comes through as you can see it's starting to lace here let's just move out those little bits there and you can apply more because again this doesn't um, dry for quite a few hours so it's kind of touch dry within about five to six hours and it'll take um, a full 24 hours to completely harden so now I'm gonna try mixing so I've got a, a pot here some of this blue because I want to see what colour I want for the sky. This blue is too dark for the sky so I'm going to lighten it with some white ceramic. So I've got a little pot here and pour a small amount in there and some of the white. So you can mix these together as well. There. So let's stir that in. See what colour that gives me. You can see it's already starting to change. Now obviously I can add more blue or more white if you want it lighter or darker but give this a good stir. Oh, that's a nice colour, that one. I actually like that one for the sky. There. There we go. So I'm going to pour some of this out onto the test canvas as well. There we go. And just spread that a little thinner with the spatula. And then add in my Fantasy Moon eggshell. There we go. A bit more than that. I'll pour a little this time. There. Let that spread a little. And spread that in. Swirl, merge. And there we go. So that's actually given me a nicer. I prefer this colour to this one for the sky, I think. Because then when I come to do the water, um, I can go real depth of colour. Now obviously it's got a purple hue to it, but I'm not going for an exact landscape. Um, I want an abstract landscape. Um, but I'm actually loving this colour right here. So we're going to use this one. And as you can see, the clouding effects are going on there. So we're going to get the sky on now using the blue and white ceramic mix and the Fantasy Moon eggshell for the sky. Okay, so let's move that out of the road. Uh, we need the mixing pot, obviously. Uh, we need to pour in the blue and the white ceramic to mix up that colour. So here we go. Nice amount of blue in there. Because don't forget, this is a rather large area here for the sky. And the white ceramic as well. Let's pour some of that in there. And mix those two together until you get the colour that you want. So these colours are completely mixable as well. You don't have to just stick to the colours that's on the tin. You can mix them together. There we go. Now obviously if you want that deeper, add more blue if you want it lighter. Now what I might do when I've got this on the sky is put a little bit darker up here so we can get a graduated sky coming down there as well. I think that'll look quite effective. So I'm going to just pour this onto the sky area 
and I'm going to move it around with a brush. There we go. There. So let's just get a brush. So here I'm using the uh, number 18 pop art brush and I'm just going to literally just spread that about. Nice, really opaque colour that is. Very strong pigment. Absolutely beautiful. There we go. There's quite a lot on there, which is good. Because I don't want the layers too thin, otherwise you won't get as much of the effect. Now, carefully around your buildings. If you do come into your buildings slightly, don't worry, because uh, the paint will fill it. But try and keep your gold and your black sun relief showing. There. So I'm just going to speed this up to get this onto the sky and I'll slow it down again, ready for the clouds. Right, so now all of that is filled in. If you go over your edges, just use a cotton bud or, or something like that, just to take out the excess paint. Don't worry about the stain on the canvas because um, it, it will be painted over later. So now I want to create a slight graduation in there. So I'm using my brush that I was spreading the sky with. Just wipe out the excess paint that's in there and I'm going straight into my blue, the dark blue. There, and all I'm going to do is basically drag that through the sky and blend it in so it's slightly darker at the top. There, just like that and then bring that down slightly and if you've got brush marks or whatever it doesn't matter this paint will settle okay so I don't want too much of a graduation there and we'll put a tiny bit more in than that there so just to add a bit of depth into the sky so let's get a bit more on there there we go just like that and just sideways motions if you move up and down as you can see you get those brush marks so literally side to side on the sky and just blend and merge that in and bring it down slightly. There, just like that. And that will give you some bit of depth, bit of graduation. Now you can blend that as much or as little as you like. So if you've got an effect and you like it, leave it. There, there's no right or wrong. It's a matter of what you like. And I like some of these blue bits through here. I'm gonna leave those there because when I put the clouds in, I want kind of like a sky effect. So I'm just going to bring those a little further down because I do like those lines in the sky there. There. I'll blend some of those in a bit more. Right, time to get some clouds in here now. So the clouds are literally the way that we practiced on that bit of paper beforehand. Again, brush marks around the edges, don't worry, we can tidy that up later. But for now, I'm literally just going to drizzle in where I want the clouds with the Fantasy Moon Pearl. There we go. So let's drizzle that in. Where I want some clouds going on around here. Don't forget to bring some of those down by your building. Spread it out a little. Put it in the shape you want it to be. There we go. Let's drizzle on some of those clouds. I'm going to move them in a minute anyway with a palette knife. But for now, just get the paint on roughly where you want some clouds to be. That'll do. You can add more later or you can move it around. If you don't like the effect that the paint's having, you can move it around a bit. Now as you can see we're already starting to get some effect going on here. So I'm just going to start moving this around and let's speed this up a little. see the clouds here really have started to take effect. I like the way those are so I'm going to leave them. So once you like an effect leave it. Now the, all of these buildings we're going to get done in one go so I'm going to go through the colours that I'm going to use and I'll start putting them in and then I'll speed up the video again so you can see it taking effect. Now once all of those are on we've got to allow it to completely dry also the water so we're going to finish this painting now except once it's all completely dry, we're going to be using the transparent vitrail paint to create some shadows to give the 
3D effect that we want on this painting. So for now, um, I've got several moon colours. So I'm going to be using the uh, carmine in moon, uh, lilac, okay, and that one is antique pink, and beautiful colour that is. Now these moon paints will give a hammered metal effect. Um, so they're great for buildings. Let's just get that off there. So great for buildings. And also the prism, which we're going to be using as well. Um, obviously, here yeah, gives a honeycomb effect on the paint, uh, uh, on the actual surface as well. Also a good for a building effect. Now, because buildings are not just a solid color, they have undulation on them, brickwork and whatnot. Now we're not gonna paint the brickwork. We're gonna use the effects of the paints to actually um, create that. So I'm gonna start putting in some of these distant buildings here and we have distant trees here as well. So I am going to need some green. So the green I'm going to use as well will be the prism. And I'm also gonna drop in some of the, um, there we go, the antique gold prism as well for a little bit of highlight on the trees. And with the green, I'm going to go for my small brush, just there, take a small amount of that green. I'm literally just going to drop it into where these trees are here in the distance, just there. So that little blob in there, I'm going to spread that across. Don't worry about any effects for now. The effects happen as the paint dries. Now with uh, with the uh, Fantasy Prism, uh, the effect does take quite a while to show. So you, you if you don't see an effect within 10, 15 minutes, don't panic, okay? But remember, the more you use, the more effect you get. So if you want more of an effect, use a little bit more paint. Less of an effect, put the paint on that, just that little tiny touch thinner. There we go. So we're just filling in those distant trees over there. We can already see some colors going in. It's uh, lovely colours there, beautiful, especially for those distant trees there. Right, I love that. Now, what I'm going to do is, so that it can merge in while the effect is happening with this paint, I'm going to drop in some highlights on the trees. So we've got to decide which way the light's coming from now. And I want the light coming in from the right so that these buildings really show up in the light. So, because these are the main focus today and taking you in to basically the story, which is Venice. And this particular view is the view from Rialto Bridge. Uh, quite a stunning view, to be fair. Right, so, again, with just the prism, uh, so I'm staying with the prism uh, because I put the green is the, uh, the prism. And I'm going to drop in to the right of each tree, because the sun's coming in from this way. So I'm going to drop in the right of each tree just the antique gold. There we go. And as that merges in, I'm going to stipple it in a bit more in just a second. Now with the rest of the buildings for now, don't worry about light and dark because we'll be putting all the shadows in afterwards at the end using the betrayal paint, which is a transparent glass paint. Um, technically it's a glass paint and technically this sky was a ceramic paint, but you can paint on any surface with these paints. They are incredible. So I'm just going to tap that in a little bit now, merge some of the gold with the green. And as the moon effect, or as the prism effect comes out in that, it will show slight highlights and lowlights here and there. And you can add more later as well. So I'll be adding the shadows to that later when I go on with the vitrail, once all of this is dried. Probably be tomorrow once I do that. I'll be leaving it overnight. Right, so the trees are done. And it's now a matter of starting on the building. So I'm going to start on the very distant buildings here and then we'll work our way forward in the painting. The water and these um, docks. Uh, so the water and the docks we will be um, painting in last because once we do the water we've got reflection coming down as well. Um, so we'll get that all sorted later and uh, for the meantime get your colour sorted that you want for all of your buildings because you're doing all the buildings in one go. I'm using a small brush now because I'm going into the distance and I'm starting off with Fantasy Moon, uh, the pearl. So I'm going to be doing this building here. Uh, so don't forget give that a good stir and take a little bit of the paint on your brush and basically all we're doing is we're just filling in just like that now if you get it on any of the sun relief don't panic just wipe it off with a cotton bud okay because obviously we want to keep that color for the outline effectively we actually want to keep that color there 
So just basically go around your buildings and fill it in with the effect paint. Now it looks very similar to the canvas color here. It's just a slightly creamy effect. The reason I'm doing that is because this building is further in the distance, so it needs to be lighter. Okay, as we come forward, we'll use more vibrant colors and that will give you your tonal recession. At the end of the day, this is still an abstract painting. So if you want to use vibrant colors all the way through, you know, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so that's there, just this little bit up there in this building. And then tidy up with a cotton bud if you need to. And if you don't need to, don't worry. And again, don't forget the shadows and everything we're going to be applying later. So the dark side of the building would be here. So this part here would be shadowed. Um, but as I say, we're going to put the shadows on once this is dried. And we're going to use a transparent betrayal glass paint to do that. And there we go. So that's the one building completely covered. Now, time to speed up.
of this is dry, it's time to get some shadows on these buildings before we do the water. So now I'm going to have to mix up some shadow uh, mix. Um, I mean, you could use the trail colours as they come, but I want to add a really nice deep shadow. The deeper the shadow, it means the brighter the sun. So I'm going to be using the Vitrail this time because this is a transparent colour and I'm going to be using the red violet and the deep blue to mix up a nice shadow mix. Now, obviously I need this to be a little lighter or a little thinner so you can see through it more. So you can either use the lightning medium, uh, the vitriol lightning medium, or you can use the odorless mineral spirit. Now, I want this to flow a little bit better, so I'm going to be using the spirit because it will thin it as well as lighten it as well. Now, not too much of this, but just enough. So we're going to need a, a palette to mix up on and here's one. Now remember these colours must be stirred okay and don't shake these colours up otherwise you'll end up with bubbles. So here we go stir these nice and thoroughly just like that. There we go and I'm going to pour some of that into my palette not too much. Don't forget you can always mix up more later and obviously the blue so that was the red now i'm going to mix the blue now i only want a small amount of this to start we can add more to get the right color so i'm just going to drizzle this out from the spatula and mix together on the palette now you can see it almost looks black on this palette okay like that so i think as you can see i can drag there some of the reds showing through we need it a bit a little bit more violet than that so add a tiny bit more blue there we go and mix that in there so i'm going to test this color first of all there so i'm just going to grab my little brush and i'm just going to drag some of that color out now that is a lovely color for shadow as you can see beautiful color but i need to test if it is see-through so here's the sky that we did earlier on the test sky area and I'm going to drag that across there. Now, as you can see, it's not really free flowing. So we need that a little bit more free flowing on there. So I'm going to add in a tiny touch of the mineral spirit on my brush. You can see that loosens that up just like that. So it makes it a little bit watery there. And test again. As you can see, that's much better consistency and you can see it's still transparent. You can see through it, but it darkens that down. This is going to add a 3D effect onto the buildings. So now I've got that mixed up, I'm happy with that colour. I'm going to add this now to my main painting. So at this stage, we need to decide which direction the light is coming from. I want the light coming in from the right, so the light is going to catch here. So this area of the building here is going darker. So I'll do this first explaining what I'm doing and around some of the windows on this building here. And then I'll speed things up a bit so that you can see it in its final, uh, final phase before we add the water. So first of all, it's literally darken the entire section. There we go. Just like that. Don't worry about that flag for now. If it goes in there, it's perfectly fine because we'll be changing that later anyway. There. So, if it's a little too runny, just add a bit more of thickened colour. That's better. Because we need this to be a good, decent shadow. Now, I don't want to make the shadow opaque, which is why I've used the trail. Because I want to be able to see through this. There, and time to smooth it down. Now as this dries, it may go slightly lighter because we have used the thinner in there. So you can always add more later as it's drying. So as you can see now, that building is starting to look a bit more 3D. Now windows, if windows are sticking out, the shadow would go this side. If they're depressed in, the shadows need to go this side of the window. So they go in the direction from where the light is coming from. These windows are pushed in and these little placards here are lumped out. So, how you put your shadow on there? Again, I'm just going to switch to a smaller brush. There we go, the smaller one. Pick up some colour. And so for this one, the shadow is coming in this side here. And down. And at the top there. Okay. And again. And here. You can see it's really showing up dark on there, so I might just add a tiny touch more thinner to that bit, just to thin it down a little. 
I don't want quite want it that dark. And there we go. So this one here is lumped out, but the middle bit is pressed in. So because that's pressed in, it's the top and down the side there. And because this part is lumped out, the shadow would be cast here and here, just like that. That gives a pressed in and a protruding from the building. Time to speed up. ready to go so all the paints have been stirred thoroughly don't forget you must stir these paints so first of all I'm going to go in with the um, dark blue here on the ceramic paint so the ceramic is an opaque paint if you want it transparent I'll be using vitrail here but I do want an opaque here so I'm just going to pour this in then I'll move it about with the brush in just a moment but for now I just want to pour some in there we go, so it's nice and dark. I haven't used any white mixture in this like I have with the sky because I do need the water to be a little bit deeper. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour in some of the ceramic of the turquoise. There we go, not too much of that. I don't want it to go too green. For now, I'm just gonna literally spread this all over the canvas, there. is completely be dried here as you can see beautiful effects going on with the water here and that was because of the sideways strokes of the brushes so now uh, we're going to get some details into the water some shadows here I'm going to paint this flag as well and we're going to start and get the boats in and all of these docks here and poles so first things first we're going to get the shadows in over here so I'm going for a medium sized brush and I'm going to use the vitrail I want this to be see-through but also we've got to get these docks in here so I might do that first before I start putting shadows into the water or reflections so using the brown moon I'm just going to use so brown fantasy moon there we go again make sure your paints are good and well stirred up and I'm just going to drop in those docks just in there like that there we go so just filling in all of the white canvas so we don't want any white canvas left at this stage okay and there we go so quite simple and just paint that in there I know I've got the color of the water in there 
that's fine. I'll just paint over the top like that. There we go. Because the water is now completely dry, you're not going to get any bleeding. So now it's time to pop on the reflections. Now we've got multiple different colours in here, so I'm going to use a vitrail um, for the simple fact it's see-through. Now because this is completely dry, uh, you can use the mineral spirit on a piece of tissue to wipe away, or kitchen roll is best as it won't break up, to wipe away anything that you don't like if you've got that on there. So first things first, vitrail, and I'm going to use my medium sized brush. I want to start with these distant shadows over here. Now because that's white here, I'm actually just going to dip it into a red vitrail. Now it's going over the top of blue, so I need a very, very thin coat of this. So I'm just going to tap in a little bit there and drag down there like that. Time to speed up. now we're going to put in the wake and the water. I'm actually going to use the ceramic and if you don't like this just remember you can wipe it away again the same as this because your blue, your water underneath is completely dry at this stage. So just dip into the ceramic using the sharp edge of the brush so make sure that is a nice sharp edge along there. And all I'm going to do is basically just literally touching in the effects of some water here and there. Now the wake will get larger as it goes away, as we did earlier. As you can see, that's reinstated the wake. Now make sure that your strokes are horizontal. There, just like that. Time to speed up. So as you can see, quite effective. Now you probably saw me at some point wiping a piece out from here. That's perfectly fine. Again, all I did was used a cotton bud to wet down some of the, the uh, paint left behind that I didn't want there and then just use a tissue to take it away. So if there is a mark you don't like, uh, don't worry about not being able to take it out. You can. Now as you can see those reflections are looking rather effective now that it's actually placed under the water. So now we're going to come over to here. So first of all I've got this flag to paint just here. So I'll get that done first and then we'll look at these poles and the um, docks areas. So first of all, I'm going to go to Fantasy Prism. Now this is the uh, English red. I know it's not an English flag, but I'm still going to do it in the English red with the Fantasy uh, Prism here. So I'm going to drop that into the flag. We're going to paint this flag a nice red. We're going to shadow it afterwards as well to give it a bit of movement once it's dried. But for now, just drop the paint in. Now you can do this earlier on in the painting. I didn't want to risk it running into my buildings, which is why I left it. Okay, because it's such a deep colour against a light background as well. So let's just get some more paint and get that in there. There we go and drop it into that well that was created with the sun relief. As I say, we'll add shadow to that later to bring it out a bit more and add some depth in there. Okay, so now moving on to the docks. I'm going to use the Fantasy Moon Brown, the same as I've used for all the other docks as well. And basically, make sure your paint is good and well stirred and fill in. Now I'm going to leave, in the distance there, you've got some poles as well, but I'm going to leave those in just the sun relief, so just the brown, uh, the uh, gold. Let's give that a stir. There we go. So again, just fill in the wells that you've created with the sun relief with the brown and fill in your docks. Now again, we can add some shadows to this later if we wish, but to be honest, because the sun's coming from this way, it's gonna be lighter over here. So the only place I've really add shadows to these docks is at the base of them for underneath and also to these docks over here once they've completely dried. So a bit more paint there. Time to speed up. Let's just move 
move that around a little bit there. Now, the poles, uh, obviously they are red, white poles with red stripes, or some people would say, no, they're red poles with white stripes. Whichever way, we're gonna put down the white first uh, for the simple fact that we're gonna put the red across using the vitrail color afterwards. So we're going back to the white ceramic. Now, the reason we're using the white ceramic is it's completely opaque. And as you can see on this one here, if I just drop this in, where the lines are, the water is going straight through it. So I'm going to bring that down to there. Time to speed up. And there we go. So there's just a few little things I can do extra on here now to make sure that this is ready to, to go uh, to start drying out basically. So first of all, I need reflection from these poles as well, where they're actually finishing the water. Otherwise they're just floating there. So we need to put the reflection in. Also I've noticed a bit of a reflection gap here. This building is gonna be reflecting in the water here. So I'll just need to reinstate that. So first of all, I'm going to my wider brush again, make sure it's thoroughly clean. And again, using the uh, red vitrail. Now not much on the brush because it's a white building. I don't want too much paint there so just wiping off all the excess and again so I'm going to fill this area here that's better there so it doesn't look so empty and I'll just clean off the trail off that uh, ceramic there so we haven't got red waves just like that there we go now, the pole, reflection poles, uh, ob obviously I don't want to use ceramic because ceramic is an opaque colour. So I'm actually going to use Fantasy Prism, uh, sorry, Fantasy Moon, uh, the pearl colour, but with a difference. I'm actually going to have plenty of thinner in my brush. There's a quite a damp brush and I'm literally just going to have a smidge of the paint to try and make it that little bit more transparent. Let's see how this looks. Let's go for this large one here first. Oh yes, there we go. So we've got the reflection of the poles in the water. So okay, now that this is just touch tacky, it's not completely dry. It's just been left for about an hour and I've come back just to test it and it's perfectly ready. See, so no transfer onto my fingers. So it's now ready for the final finishing touches. So we're gonna complete this painting now. So all we need to do basically is the red stripes going down the poles and the shadows on the poles as well, as well as the shadows and detailing on the boats. And that's it, the painting will be finished. So uh, what I'm going to do now, first off, is get in some of these shadows on the pole. Now, shadow on white is normally blue, but these blues are incredibly bright and I don't want it blending in with the water. So what I'm actually going to do is the uh, trail blue with the tiniest touch of red. So not quite as purple color as this shadow, just enough to take the edge off the blue. And first of all, I'm going to put a shadow down the side of each of these poles that I've done. And I'm going to drag that across. Now you see how it just separates it slightly from the water. I didn't want it blue because it would look like water. So I'm putting that down the left of each of these poles. And I'm going to blend that in in just a second. And because this is now like touch, touch tacky to touch dry, it's not dragging the paint underneath. There we go. So I'm going to pull all those over in a minute just to blend that in to give the impression of the rounded like what we did up here. So we're going to do the same thing to these poles before we put the red on. There we go, just like that. So now I'm just going to rinse off my brush in the mineral spirit. Let's wipe off the excess because I want a, not a wet brush, just slightly damp with the mineral spirit. I'm just going to drag that across just to get rid of any hard lines on there. So it's rounded, not squared. And do the same to all of them. Just literally round that off and lighten it in certain areas. Wipe your brush regularly. There. Now if these were square posts, obviously you'd lead a, leave a hard line there to give the impression of it being squared and going around a corner. So I'm just adding a bit more spirit to my brush. There we go. 
because I'm painting this on incredibly thin, uh, it does dry quite quickly to be fair, so you will need to keep added mineral spirit to your brush and wipe off regularly as well, so you can pull some of that paint out there. So I'm just taking off the hard line to blend that in a little bit more. There. Nice, nearly there. When it stops moving, add a bit more spirit and the mineral spirit. That's more like it. There we go. There, so they're looking a bit more rounded now than they were before. They're not as square. And take out some areas to lighten up if you've got too much in one side. There we go, just like that. Now, we need to get the stripes on these, obviously. So we need the red, because we need a nice deep red. Now, red vitrail is see-through, and then you have red ceramic. Um, I'm going to try... The red ceramic, I think, because I need that red to be quite vibrant on there. And time to add that onto the stripes. Now I'm using the fine brush yet again, the really tiny one. Because on some of these small ones, I can use the sharp edge. And on the large ones, I can use the corner there or use it straight there, depending on how thick I want these stripes. And I'm putting it on quite thinly. So here, I'm just doing the stripes like that. There we go and don't forget wipe off the excess from your brush and get some in on the shadows now obviously because it's a reflection they're going to be going in the opposite direction but just a few lines you don't want anything too too drastic just to give the impression of a reflection going on there and again same for the others reload your brush and get those in there for those red stripes and again opposite direction for reflection lovely that red has worked really well really standing out there now if I use the vitrail if I put too much on it can look a bit dark I needed the brightness of the red so that's why I'm using the ceramic and again on its reflection and there so do the same to all of these poles and don't forget the reflections. Okay, so I'll clean off my brush now and I'm going to go back to the shadow mix. And again, this is on white, so I don't want it blue like my water. Otherwise, I'll lose the boat in the water. But I don't want it too purple. So I'm still going to say, stick to the same mix that I've put on here because it's a deep enough shadow to, to carry that off. So going back to the shadow I mixed up, I'm still with the same small brush. And all I'm going to do is literally shadow out this side of the boat here. There. And put a line there. Oh, that's a little bit more. Let's add a tiny touch of thinner to that because I need it a bit thinner than that. There we go. Oh, that's better. So if your paint isn't moving very well, you need it to move that a little bit more, just add a tiny touch of the thinner. There. And dark down that side there. Shadow around the windows, because they're depressed into the building. Now we're going to put a little lip along the top of the boat there. Like that. And there as well. Just a faint line. I'm going to put some under the edge here. That depth. And a tiny bit around there. Like that as well. And that's the, this here is going to cast a shadow down here. Like that. Now you can add as much detail to the boat as you want to. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to soften in some of those lines in me. I'm just going to let it go a little tacky. And again, for the boat in the distance, drag that across there. And there, take that down there and shadow in those windows, just like that. And a shadow on the top rim 
there. Now I'm going to soften those shadows in a little because even though I like the nice deep shadows, I do want them a little bit softer than that. So all I've got is a slightly damp brush with a mineral spirit and just literally soften that in. There we go. You see the difference that makes just by softening your shadows. And by softening those in, I've also got a slightly mucky brush there, and I can actually add, because it's not a very clean boat, this one. You can add a bit of muck to the boat itself. Let's soften that down a bit so it's not as deep. And add a little bit of light on there. there. So you can see, just by moving that shadow about a bit, it makes a world of difference. There. Now, same with the other boat. Let's soften down some of those shadows up a little bit more. So first of all, soften that in, add a bit of muck along the bottom there, and there, and there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed um, doing this painting, I really hope you have a good go at it. Um, but before we do say goodbye, I am just going to add a few shadows onto that flag. So again, using the same colour, I keep forgetting the flag. So using that same colour, I'm just going to add a few crease shadows. Colour. And a bit more thinner, water that down. And add a few shadows in, just where the flag is waving in the wind. It's an excessive, just a few touches here and there. There, and the crease marks. Now, soften some of those hard lines in. same as before on the boat just soften some of them in make it look a little bit on the mucky side but at the same time more kind of waving in the wind there we go we don't want hard lines on there that's it and there we go so that is now complete so I really hope you have enjoyed this project. Um, don't forget you can actually email me with pictures of the projects that you've done on my website, leanneellisart.com. Um, and uh, basically, I really, really just hope that you get a little bit mucky with a heck of a lot of color. Enjoy, have fun, and thank you for watching.